as we make way for the Syracuse head coach, Jim Beheim. Coach, uh, thanks for joining us. I wish it was under better circumstances, but uh, the passing of John Thompson, what will his legacy be? Bigger than life. You know, a little bit like you, Dan. Uh, unique uh, coach, a great coach, but a presence at every game. How many times do you go to a basketball game to watch the coach? None. No coaches. You know, NBA, college. Uh, you know, you went to the game to see Big John. And I, he was a great coach, uh, but he was a, a presence in the game. And really a true, the first real African-American role model for all young coaches, black and white, but also for kids, players growing up. Um, you could see here's a guy that does it his way. He wins, he's successful, uh, really extraordinarily smart guy who understand, understood what it was about, really, on all sides, inside and out, basketball, on the court, off the court. Uh, we had the most bitter rivalry in the game, probably, at one point in time. Uh, there was no love lost. And... Uh, as big as Duke, North Carolina is, it's a huge rivalry. It was not like Syracuse, Georgetown for about 15 years uh, when the Big East started and Big John was there. Um, but his presence was on, off, on and off the court. Uh, his leadership off the court for all coaches, all coaches, and certainly African-American coaches. Um, I don't know the numbers, how many uh, black head coaches there were in 1970. Too, uh, but I know that it wasn't anywhere near the numbers today, and that's because of John Thompson. Um, Did he try I, to intimidate you? Oh, he tried to intimidate everybody. And if you couldn't ha stand up to that, you were done. You were toast. You were out of it. And he made programs better because, you know, PJ at Seton Hall, Jim Calhoun at Connecticut, um, you can go right down the list of coaches. Rick Patino at Providence, um, all who, Gary Williams at Boston College, all who are in the Hall of Fame. Rolly Massimino should probably be in the Hall of Fame. They're in the Hall of Fame because of, well, two or three things. Dave Gavitt, the Big East, and John Thompson. Because you either matched up and played up to that level. And if you could play up to the Georgetown level in, at that time, you could beat anybody. And uh, our league spawned great programs because of the standard you had to play up to uh, to compete uh, with John. And uh, his presence was unlike any other. But like I said, you don't go to games to watch coaches. But fans, 32,000 people went to the Carrier Dome to watch John Thompson. And there was Hoya paranoia. You know, we as fans watching that. As a coach, did you have to – Tell your kids don't get caught up in that. Or did they ever get caught up in the Hoya paranoia? Well, that was just John's way of us against the world. And it was the way he motivated his players. And he used it. And he pushed it. Um, nobody really hated those guys. My players were friends with the Georgetown players from a couple summer trips. But then they weren't allowed to talk to my players when we were going to play. Uh, but, you know, players know that stuff. They understand that stuff. Uh, they just want to compete. And uh, I know the greatest games I've ever been involved with were with Georgetown, whether it was Patrick or in the garden um, here at Georgetown. Uh, just great games. And uh, you just like to be a part of it, really. Um, Dave Gavitt built something out of nothing, and John was a big part of that. And certainly when Patrick went to Georgetown and Chris Mullen went to St. John's and Pearl came to Syracuse, that was our moment. That was the league's moment. And uh, it was a great moment. And John was a big, big part of that. Did you recruit Ewing at Syracuse? Yeah, we went to see him. We were one of those, I think, 15 schools went in, but you knew going in that there was no chance he was going to Georgetown. Um, you knew that pretty quickly. 
And then we recruited Alonzo after that, and Alonzo came up to visit. And I, I just brought him to the office the first night, to, you know, just to say hi. And I said, I'm glad you're here, but I know you're going to Georgetown. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me. He said, yeah, coach. <laughs> you know, it would be hard not to. <laughs> he wanted to come up because Billy Owens was visiting, and they were good friends. And, of course, we got Billy. That worked out good for, for us, too. When did you become friends with John Thompson? You know, it was late in the – when he was still coaching near the end, I think we – talked at a Nike trip, um, a Final Four, and, uh, you know, we found out that neither one of us were such bad guys. And, uh, you know, we've been friends ever since that. And, you know, we met up every year at the Final Four someplace. It's ironic that when we won in 03, as I shook hands with Roy Williams, the next person I shook hands with was John Thompson. He was sitting there at the radio table with Bill Raftery and he had a big smile on his face and was happy, happy for me. Um, we became great fan, friends. Uh, we still have a great rivalry. He would poke us when we played Georgetown and, you know, he loved doing that. But uh, again, there's not really any of us that are unique in coaching, but he was, he, he was unique. Now we're talking to Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim. Uh, before I let you go, what, what are we looking at with college basketball? We're going to play. I, I think that we have to learn as a society, not just from the NBA and baseball and soccer, golf. The greatest thing I've seen in golf was yesterday on TV, and we wouldn't have that if all the people that want people to just stay home for the next, I guess, five years all stayed home. So we have to figure it out. Athletes, I think, are safer on campus. The testing shows that. They're, they're better off on campus. Uh, we could play during November, December with no students on campus if we're worried about the students affecting us. Yeah. But all in all, I think students in general and the public in general is better when kids are on campus being tested. And we should have rapid testing next month or so. And if you're doing that, where should students be? They should be on campus. They should be in high school. They should be in kindergarten. That's where they learn. I know that 50 or 60% of the high school kids in America are learning nothing or next to nothing. And how long can we do that? How long can that go on? And everybody says, well, you want to play. It's about the money. No, the players want to play. It's it, the money is irrelevant. The money is there. That's going to happen. But our players want to, they've been working out for seven weeks and they want to play and we're testing them and we will test them every day. Are there going to be some positives? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think too many times with younger people, we take positives as like a death sentence. It's not, it's something they can be bet. 47 Clemson players tested positive this year, and all 47 are back practicing. So I think we have to understand this is tough. This is not easy. But we have to find a way to play through this. And I believe we will. I believe there, there will be some ups and downs. But you can't stop because there's some positive tests. There's – there's positive tests in Arizona and California and they're not going to school there. Have you, so, uh, have you been tested? I get tested every week. I get tested every week. I wear my mask. I stay away uh, from groups. Um, I play golf by myself, but I always did anyway. But uh, yeah, we have to take those precautions. You have to do your show safely. We have to do as things as safely as we can, but I'm convinced players are safer on campus being tested every day with the medical staffs around. Um, and I think treatments have gotten better and much better for young people as well. Uh, but I, I just don't believe we can say, well, well, let's wait. Uh, you know, 50 percent of the people don't take flu shots right now in the country and people that get flu shots still get the flu. So I don't know how we can sit back and say, oh, yeah, we're going to have a vaccine in two months. I think that's political electioneering. I don't yeah. see that. I, th I think uh, just the whole testing and getting the results back will certainly help out a lot when it comes to uh, 
college athletics. It's great to talk to you, um, and thank you for reminiscing about Coach, and uh, my best to the family. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. That's uh, Jim Beheim, Syracuse head coach. And, you know, that that's sort of the philosophy that you're hearing because you don't have to worry about as many players, student-athletes, with college basketball. But the question is, where will we be when you want to start to travel? College basketball can really benefit from the after-Thanksgiving scheduling because if students are gone by Thanksgiving – now it's just the basketball players. Now you might have football players still on campus, depending on if they're doing